and welcome to this McDowell Signature Premier Indian Derby Special on the Fly King Fisher winning post. I'm Mohit Lalwani to bring you all the action from the Mahalakshmi race course. And I'm Mandira Lalwani. Thank you very much for joining us. Of course, the McDowell Signature Premier Indian Derby is the most prestigious race on the entire racing calendar. You know, it's the one event where the, only the bold stand out, whether it's racing or even where it's glamour. And for first timers who have come here, it's an event unlike any other in the city. That's right. In fact, speaking of those new to racing, a newcomer or a first-timer put Mohit through a kind of a test and let's have a look to see how he fared. Hi, I'm Anushka Manchanda and I'm at the Mumbai race course before the biggest race of the year, the McDowell Signature Premier Indian Derby. I don't know anything about the races. So, for the uninitiated like me, here's a quick Dummy's Guide to the Derby with the host of the winning post, Mohit Lalwani. Hi Mohit. Anushka, how are you? I'm very good and very keen to find out what is this race about? Am I being tested here? Oh my god, yes. Okay, well the race, it's the McDowell Signature Premier Indian Derby. It is the biggest horse race of the year, the most prestigious and the richest. Wow. It's run over a mile and a half, so it starts right behind us actually. And it's for four-year-olds only, Indian horses only. And it is known as the classic. It is the second jewel of the Indian Triple Crown. So, how many horses can participate? Well, you know, there's no real limit except safety limits on this track, which I believe is 22 years, so you can't have more than 22 horses. Uh, at the start of the year, there's something like 300 entries, but then they whittle down to 22. But how do at you, the most. How do you, how do you decide? Does it, does it uh, go race by race? Yeah, it's basically the best horses and the trainers decide. You don't want to run a horse that's not good enough to run the derby in the derby because at the end of the day, if they're not good enough, you'll break their heart and they just won't be the same again. Oh. It's like uh, uh, me trying to play tennis with Ivan Lendl or Roger oh. Federer. <laughs> so, during the race, how do you measure the distance between the horses? Well, you know, it's known as a length and it actually relates to one body length. They try and standardize it, but it's not that easy. According yeah. to old school of thought, it's one full body length from nose to tail. Okay, nose to tail. You know, we all know about the lucky horse shoe. So, what, what kind of horse shoes do horses wear? Okay, what's my score so far? Three out of three? Yeah. Okay, well, what type of shoes do horses wear? Well, not all horses wear shoes. Some even run bare. But those that wear shoes, generally for the McDowell Signature Premier Indian Derby, all of them will wear an aluminium type of shoe. For some of the lesser races, they can wear steel shoes which are heavier, but give them a slightly better grip. Wow. Does it make a difference? Like, is it standardized? Do all horses have to wear the same it's shoes? It's standardized. I mean, you can have some better brands than other, but more or less they're standardized. Okay. Can you tell me, Mohit, how much does a horse weigh on an average? Well, okay. Now, there's two types of weight which are important in horse racing. One is the weight of the horse and the average weight of a, a derby runner would be somewhere between 450 and 470 kilograms, which wow. is quite heavy. And they run quite, pretty quick with that weight, as you know. But they also carry weight on their back. And for the McDowell Signature Premier Indian Derby, all colts and geldings, which are the male gender, will carry 57 kilos. The female gender will all carry 55 and a half. So, do all the jockeys have to be... A a specific weight? Well, the lighter they are, the better it is and they are all equalized by lead weights in their saddle. Oh, that's interesting. So, how do you bet? Well, Anusha, there's many different types of bets. The two most common types of bets, and you can bet them at any window at the Mahalakshmi Racecourse, is win and place. Now, win, of course, is self-explanatory. If your horse wins, for right. every 10 rupees or 100 rupees that you play based on the odds, you win so much back. Place is 1, 2, 3 if the horses have a field of 8 or more or 1, 2 if it's less than 8 and 1, 2, 3, 4 if there are 12 and more. So your horse can come anywhere, of course the odds are much lower. Wow. So do you have any inside tips on betting? Yeah, I probably do but it's not something I'd advise anybody to do except bet responsibly. What kind of speed can horses reach? Like how fast do horses run? You know Anusha, that's really interesting because everybody believes that the cheetah is the fastest la land animal, right? Well, that's not right. true. A cheetah is only fast up to about 100 meters or so. The fastest land animal over a distance is a thoroughbred, the racehorse, over a mile and a half because it's got that perfect blend of speed and stamina. It sometimes hits speeds of about 60 kilometers an hour. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, tell me Mohit, uh, what are blinkers and how do they help horses? Well, now blinkers are what I consider to be that ugly piece of equipment that goes around the head of a horse. What it actually does is it, it helps a horse to concentrate in a race. 
generally you have to use it more on the male horses so they're not too distracted by the fillies in the race. Oh, so basically all the girls should get their boyfriend's blinkers? That's right. <laughs> so since we're talking about fillies, what's the difference between a filly and a colt? Well, a filly is what you are, a colt is what I am, a gelding. Well, some of my friends are geldings. It's a horse that's sadly been castrated. Okay, this is something I'm really curious about. I'm also wearing one of these uh, headpieces. What's with this, with, with fashion in the derby? Well, traditionally, fashion has always been associated with horse racing. It is the sport of kings. And at Royal Ascot, actually, in England, the summer fashion colours are dictated by what the Queen actually wears on those five days at Royal Ascot. And, you know, traditionally, it's flown across the world and people like to dress their best for derby day. But what about the head pieces? Is there any specific reason for them to be so elaborate and, and only at the Derby? You only see these head pieces at the Derby. Again, that comes from the Derby in England and of course at Royal Ascot because in the Royal Enclosure, for example, at Ascot, your head has to be covered. For a lady and a man, you have to have your head covered. Everyone has to wear hats. So, so far, Mohit, you've answered every single question of mine, I'm sure correctly. But I have one last question for you. I get a 10 on 10 so far, don't <laughs> yes, I? So far you get a 10 on 10. But you have to tell me, for a perfect score, who won the 1980 derby? Okay, that's not fair. 1980 would mean... It was a horse called Mohawk. How do I know that you're... Exactly, <laughs> you don't. I tell you, I've got 11 out of 11, right? There's your dummy's guide to the derby, Anushka. Ooh, thank you so much, Thanks, Anushka. It. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Hi, I'm Anushka Manchanda and I'm at the Mumbai race course. Well, the biggest race of the season is around the corner. So it's really important to know how to dress when you come to the derby. And I'm going to give you a quick head to toe on what you could wear to come to the races. Since the derby is a daytime event, it's nice to wear light colours. Also, since it's outdoors, it's nice to wear something that's fuss free, that you don't have to worry about. Do not wear denims to the derby. Keep it kind of formal. Um, don't wear dark colours because they don't really look so nice in the day. Keep it light and keep it fresh, keep it airy and keep it stylish. Women can't do without their heels and really why should we? All you have to remember is that you're walking on the grass so maybe you should wear shoes that have clogs or wedges. Shoes that have heels that are not too thin otherwise you spend the whole day digging holes in the ground. The derby is one of the only events where you can pull out all the stops when it comes to headgear. So, ladies, bring out your fascinators and your fancy hats because this is the only place that you can flaunt them and look great. And once you find your headgear, you can pick out nice, oversized, glamorous sunglasses to go with them. Keep your jewellery minimal, your bling simple, make sure you don't end up looking like a Christmas tree and you're all set. So, see you at the Derby. Wow, that was impressive, Mohit. Well, Mohit Alwani didn't do too badly, but then he is considered a kind of an expert of sorts. We're going to slip into a short break, but before we go into that break, let's have a look at how the first timers on the race course fared. This is my first time at the Derby. We're here for this McDowell Signature Derby. The entire atmosphere is very vibrant, you know? Fashion, beauty, style. Money. It's great. Exciting, <laughs> fun. It's full of life. It happens very often. Very often, not once a year, right? This is the first okay. time with the for all of us yeah. at the Derby here. Oh, I feel really good. I'm looking forward to going to the race now and looking at the horses. So yeah, it's, it's really amazing. The crowd and everyone. It's just spectacular to watch people so dressed up. Yeah, it's really exciting. I can't wait to bet on the horses. I love the excitement. I love the excitement when the uh, horses are running and everyone's bet and they're looking forward to their horse winning the race. And uh, also the dis disappointment when people lose. I love that part of the derby and of course the hats and the dresses that accompany it. I've never been here before so I was just like, let's experience it once. Thank you so much for staying with us here on the Winning Post. Now the derby weekend essentially is full of top class racing. And one of these was the Breeders Produce Stakes sponsored by the Kunigal Stud Farm. With just six horses in the lineup for the Kunigal Stud Breeders Produce takes a Grade 3 race over seven furlongs for three year olds, the field was led by number one Southern Opinion. This one would race in the first silks of Dr. M. A. M. Ramaswamy and was ridden by C. D. Hayes. Southern Opinion had two starts and two victories and came in with a chance despite giving the entire field weight. 
Number two, Machiavellianism was from Hyderabad and he had one victory from one start and that was by six lengths. With P.S. Chauhan in the saddle, it was no surprise that he was one of the early favourites. Number three, Silver Birch had Stefan Pasquier in the saddle and with a win from two starts to his credit, all followers of Pacey Shroff were on him. Number four, Cocktail Circuit would run in Dr. Vijay Malia's colours and had Anthony Crastus in the saddle. One victory from one start in Bangalore and she was another who would make this exciting. Amazing Desire from SK Sundarji's yard had yet to win a race but a second behind three good horses ensured that he couldn't be counted out. And finally, Day's Best had one easy lung opener at the start of the Bombay winter. With Daniel Grant in the saddle, he was expected to improve and many thought that this would be the horse to beat. We're off and racing for the great three Kunigal Stud Breeders Produce Stakes to an even start by all the runners. And as they settle down to race, there's a rush for the early lead with amazing desire towards the inside race now being passed by Cocktail Circuit in the middle. On the outside, there's Machiavellianism. A length and a quarter further back, there is Southern Opinion in the middle. On the outside there, in the green cap, making a forward move with Silver Birch. And a close last, there's Day's Best. Heading past the 1000 meter marker now with Silver Birch who shoots into the lead about a length and a half, two lengths in front of Machiavellism in second position. On the rails there is the cocktail circuit, very close behind them is Southern Opinion and Amazing Desire together. A length and a half further back there is Day's Best as they pass the 800 meter marker. Silver Birch continues to lead by about a length and a quarter in front of Machiavellism in second position. Southern Opinion going slightly wide then comes Amazing Desire. Then comes the day's best making progress on the rails. There's uh, cocktail circuit as they straighten up for home. Silver Birch comes in home first, a length in front of Machiavellism in second position. Amazing Desire is putting up in the middle. On the outside, there is uh, Southern Opinion. Then comes uh, Day's best, pretty well. Nice turn in the middle with about 250 meters more to run. Machiavellism about half a length in front of Amazing Desire in the middle. On the outside, Day's best surging ahead now. It's Day's best on the outside who takes it up. About a length and a half, two lengths in front of Southern Opinion on the wide outside. Then there is Amazing Desire with about 50 to go. And Day's best wins the Kunigal Stud Beaters produce stakes in great style from Southern Opinion finishing up second. Then comes Amazing Desire and the rest as the race past the finish. The winner Day's Best will now target the Poonawala Breeders Multimillion, a son of burden of proof out of Enduring Image. He is owned by Shivin Surindranath and Neil Shah. He was ridden by Daniel Grant, trained by Adil Daji and bred at the Kunigal Stud Farm. The McDowell Signature Premier Indian Derby is synonymous with top class racing and top fashion. This isn't a new occurrence. It's been this way over the several years that McDowell's been a part of the Indian Derby. We caught up with Manoviraj Khosla who has seen it all mostly first hand. The Derby is... You know, it is the biggest race in the country, the Indian Derby, and uh, you know, it's it's very encouraging and nice to see that so many people are actually so interested in horse racing. The dress code at the Derby, so to say, has always been sort of a lounge suit. And over the years, you know, you would see all the men in their suits, traditional business suits, so to say. The women would come in their saris or salwar kameezes and the odd few people would wear maybe a dress or something. I'm talking about, you know, many years ago. But over the years, the business woolen suit has given way to slightly trendier colors, linen suits, you know, trendy looking uh, jackets, you know, jackets in a variety of colors. As far as the women are concerned, uh, we see Indian wear actually has moved out a lot and Western wear has sort of taken its place completely. Today we see women in the most gorgeous dresses that completely dressed up to the hilt. And apart from just the dresses, it's the hats. And I think the hats is what actually makes the derby. 
certain segment of people who go for the derby. A lot of people don't understand the derby, so they don't really actually show up at it. Uh, but the ones who actually go there understand what fashion at the derby means and actually go and make sure that they are very fashionable at the derby, whether it's the way they're dressing, the hats, the shoes, the bags, the glasses, it's everything. It's a whole package and it's fantastic. Hi, I'm Amy Pilamoria and I'm here for the McDowell's Derby. Today I'm here at the Derby and uh, being a designer, I'm always uh, looking at dressing the best for the occasion. Uh, starting from the top, I'm wearing a headgear designed by my husband, Farzad Villamoria, uh, to complement uh, the, the season and the seat, a white uh, cool shirt with uh, brown jodhpurs and boots. I think it just uh, tops it up to make the entire look prim and proper. It's really amazing, the crowd and everyone, it's just spectacular to watch people so dressed up. something special that I've been wearing. <laughs> uh, be pretty, but at the same time be comfortable. Always wear a hat, that's very important. Yes. I'm wearing a hat that I picked up on a holiday from Sri Lanka. My dress is Roberta Kavali. My bag is Louis Vuitton and my shoes are from Ken. This is Max Azaria, the dress. And I, instead of wearing the hat on my head, I put it as a brooch. And it's an Alexander McQueen. They are my own creation. I thought there was enough happening anyway to have big earrings also. Don't let gambling take over your life and drink responsibly. Time for us to slip into a short break, but stay put, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Fly King Fisher winning post. Now, the McDowell Signature Premier Indian Derby is sponsored by the UB Group. The chairman, of course, for that is Dr. Vijay Malia. Well, and Dr. Vijay Malia, of course, is synonymous with many great horses, two of which have found their way into Derby tradition. McDowell Signature Premier Indian Derby weekend. And well, of course, it does get very warm and you need a refreshment. Well, traditionally at Kentucky, at Louisville on Derby Day, is the mint julep. Out here you have two drinks. One is the traditional saddle up, which we're going to take a look at first, and then the satellite. But let's take a look at the saddle up first, named after Dr. Vijay Malia's greatest racehorse. Okay, so we have some ice first, some Premier Signature next, 60 ml. Okay, so that goes in. And I'll tell you, I've had a sip of this, it's very, very smooth. Some lime and mixed up well. And we are ready to go and I'm looking forward to that, some soda. I'll just hold my horses there for a second. Some Sprite. And we're ready to go. Cheers. Ah, lovely. Now for the satellite. Let's try the satellite. Satellite is named after another great horse from Dr. Vijay Malia's table. She was a champion filly by Razin. So let's take a look. Okay. So 60 milliliters of signature premier. So the same base for this. Fruit syrup instead of apple syrup in this one. Some peach tea as well. And some slice of lime squeezed in and then dropped in a bit of a shake we're nearly ready to go so very similar it's a different color darker color we'll see how that changes with the mix that's some soda water a touch of that some more lime and that's it let's take a look at this very different also very nice I think I'm gonna keep both But I can tell you both were extremely refreshing at the races in the afternoon. Well, let's catch up with all the rest of the racing action because the entire weekend was sponsored by the UB Group. With about 350 meters more to run, then Elena's traveling comfortably indeed. About two and a half lengths clear, the others are struggling to catch up. With about 200 meters more to run, there Elena is about two and a half, three lengths clear and stretching away from Daffodils coming up with a late run to finish second. Alina now easily wins the United Spirits Challenge in great style with a jockey looking back. 
Daffodils finishing up second, then comes Persian Lily and check her out. With about 250 meters more to run, Spirit of Mercy is still traveling well, about two and a half lengths in front of El Classico, getting a little bit closer. Then comes Haunting Fantasy, Sergeant Pepper is out of the reckoning, with about 150 meters more to run there. And Spirit of Mercy is about three lengths clear, not going to be caught. Spirit of Mercy about three and a half, four lengths clear of Haunting Fantasy moving to be second. Then comes Lake Geneva, Glowing Star as the race past the finish. Close of the fence there is uh, Serena in the red cap. Then comes Piano Man with about 300 meters more to run. And Supreme Minstrel goes for it. About two and a half, three lengths in front of Blue Wonder in second. Serena towards the inside waves. Asahi is dropping out of contention. Then comes uh, Shivali Pride and Piano Man with about 100 to go. And Supreme Minstrel is not going to be caught. Supreme Minstrel easily wins the White and Mackey challenge from um, Blue Wonder finishing up second. Then comes Serena, Piano Man, Shivali Pride as the race past the finish. With about 250 meters more to run, and IBS now starting the best of all, stretching away a length and a half, two in front of Kaskazi. Then there's Kalinga Star fighting hard to keep up, but IBS is not going to be caught. IBS now stretching away about two and a half, three lengths in front of uh, Kaskazi and uh, Kalinga Star fighting for the minor places. But IBS it is who wins it from uh, Kalinga Star, Kaskazi, and Musical Rhapsody as they race past the finish. With about 300 meters more to run, Mishri just the leader from Star Builder on the outside, Master of the Sky towards the inside. There's Purple Patch coming with a big run in the middle, and Sadler's Rule also joining these four with about 150 meters more to run. Purple Patch is about a length in front and traveling the best of all. Purple Patch now stretching away from the rest. Purple Patch wins this one from uh, Mishri just about managing the second place from Master of the Sky. Then comes Sadler's Rule, Follow the Dream, and the rest. With about 250 meters more to run and Emidius takes it up from Dancing Glasses coming on his tail on the outside and these two are pulled away from Dover's Hill with about 200 to go. It's uh, Dancing Glasses on the outside, just the shade of Emidius fighting back on the inside days. They're going stride for stride. Dancing Glasses from Emidius. Dancing Glasses traveling the better. Dancing Glasses wins the back dog trophy from uh, Emidius finishing up second. Then comes Dover's Hill demonstrator as they race past the finish. With about 300 meters more to run, and it's uh, Hurricane Bird, just the leader from uh, Cent Percent, coming up with gigantic strikes on the outside. Cent Percent takes over. A length and a half, two in front of Hurricane Bird. Then comes Daughter of Destiny. Then there is uh, Ocean Admiral and the rest, but they're all in futile chase. It's Cent Percent all the way. Cent Percent, about three and a half, four lengths clear of Ocean Admiral. Cent Percent wins the equity rare fusion of the finest cup from uh, Ocean Admiral, Daughter of Destiny. With about 300 meters more to run, it's Fallen Angels got a break of about two lengths in front of Star of Killane coming up on the outside. Viva La Diva moving between them with about 200 meters more to run. It's Fallen Angel from Star of Killane and Viva La Diva warming up now with Fallen Angel from Viva La Diva finishing fast on the outside. Fallen Angel from Viva La Diva. Viva La Diva just about wins it from Fallen Angel. Then comes Star of Killane as the race past the finish. Well, that was just a small glimpse of what the weekend was really all about. A kind of a teaser, if you'd like to call it that. Well, that's right. This is a two-part Derby special. We are done here for our first part, but we'll be back next week with part two and the main event. Thank you for joining us. Until we see you next week, may the horse be with you. Bye. Fisher winning post is powered by the Serum Institute of India and Hirko Industries.